Uh, even though the medical profession does not recognize this, uh, but I also should state that do not ever rely on a uh, supposed Rife machine to uh, cure something without working with your doctor. It's good to actually, I think, experiment with this in conjunction and in addition, in, in, in addition to what you're doing with your doctor. So in other words, if you're doing herbs, you're doing special diet, you're trying to fight some kind of cancer. Uh, and also, the other thing is, say for instance, you know, Royal Rife, if I get back to this, Royal Rife supposedly cured cancer with using micro frequencies. But I also have to point out this, there's a lot of, lot of different cancers. And if you look at the consolidated frequency list, say for instance, it is legit all the way. Say it is. Let's make that assumption. You got to know what kind of cancer you have. And you also have to get the frequency into the cancer, assuming the whole thing works. For the past 60 years, no one knew how the Rife Ray number no. 5 or, or the Beam Ray clinical instrument audio frequencies worked with high RF carrier frequency. Due to lack of this knowledge, many people have been wrongly using the audio frequencies for treatment of this. This means that all the frequency generators that people call Rife machines, which are sold in the market, can output Dr. Rife's original high RF frequencies. Dr. Rife machine output about 40 to 300 watts of power. High power instruments used ray tube, the Fanatron. Here's my attempt to build the Fanatron Rife transmitter. It uses a uh, match antenna and matching network by Ralph Hartwell from Louisiana and a Fanatron tube made in Canada. It's about 24 inches. It's about eight inches in diameter. It's backfilled with uh, with helium gas and uh, basically at uh, at atmospheric pressure. It's ionized about 40 watts to about uh, 300 watts of power. I'm using about 500 watts of power. Thank you. Everything vibrates. Everything. Our reality is such that frequencies have a much more profound effect on us than we've been previously led to believe. This basic fundamental fact can no longer be ignored. As technologically advanced as we're constantly told we are these days, there are some technologies that are just now being presented to the public as new when they're not new at all, but have simply been widely suppressed for decades. Things like the new digital neuro headbands that pulse specific electromagnetic frequencies into a person's head to change people's moods, for example. People are buying these now. This is a thing. But it was proven that that type of technology worked decades ago. It has also come out in recent years that frequencies can cure diseases, including cancer. Professor Anthony Holland even gave a TED talk called Shattering Cancer with Resonant Frequencies a couple years back, where he discussed that specific oscillating pulse electrical fields can destroy everything from cancer cells to MRSA. Over the course of 15 months, we try hundreds and hundreds of frequencies, if not thousands, until we find the magic combination. The answer is you have to have two input frequencies, one low, one high, and the higher frequency must be 11 times the lower. It's what we musicians would call the 11th harmonic. And when we add the 11th harmonic, we begin to shatter microorganisms like a crystal glass. Not that you probably heard about it on the nightly news or anything. As someone pointed out in the comments on his video, phrases like, they hadn't seen anything like it, and it seems to be a new phenomenon, made viewers who know about the organized suppression of such technologies since at least the 1930s want to slam their own heads into a wall. If you haven't heard of Dr. Royal Raymond Reif, this is someone who's been referred to by those who personally knew him as a genius. He was a scientist and inventor, and starting in the 20s, he began building a large, very complex microscope capable of magnifying objects 31,000 times, compared with the maybe 1,700 times that were available on standard microscopes in the 30s and 40s. By 1940, he had invented a two-foot microscope weighing 200 pounds that included 5,682 parts, which enabled him to see viruses and bacteria in a way that no other scientist had at that time. And because these organisms were so tiny, he designed a method of staining them with light. And through this work, he came to understand that living things, including pathogens and viruses and bacteria, have their own frequency or oscillation pattern 
And just like a specific musical note can shatter a wine glass if sung at the resonant frequency of the glass, he found specific frequencies could be used when matched up with specific pathogens in order to destroy them. And as he continued to isolate viruses and bacteria and locate their frequencies, he also claimed he discovered the virus responsible for cancer. Using resonance, or what he termed the mortal oscillatory rate of the virus, he was able to kill it in laboratory experiments over and over and over. He completed hundreds of experiments on tumors and rats purposefully infected with the isolated cancer virus before ever attempting to use these frequencies on people. In 1934, he famously tested out his device on 16 terminally ill cancer patients. Out of 16, 14 of them, all but two, were certified medically cured in just three months. Of his treatment, Reif would later write, with the frequency instrument treatment, no tissue is destroyed, no pain is felt, no noise is audible, and no sensation is noticed. A tube lights up and three minutes later the treatment's completed, the virus or bacteria is destroyed, and the body then recovers itself naturally from the toxic effect of the virus or bacteria. Video waves. Reif was hailed in the scientific and medical communities for his discoveries at first. By 1937, he'd established a company called Beamray with several colleagues, and 14 of his machines were manufactured. Multiple doctors used these machines, tested them out, and saw that they worked. It wasn't just Rife's word. So what happened? Why aren't these machines in every hospital and cancer treatment center in the world today? Why don't we have them? Simply put, the only cancer Rife couldn't seem to kill was greed. And nowhere is this manipulation more common than in medicine. Western medicine, albeit technologically advanced, treats the symptoms of illness with expensive pharmaceutical formulas and patented machinery, which reaps billions of dollars each year for those in the industry. There are many effective alternative options, however, for addressing illness. But in the last century, Western medicine has effectively swept them under the rug. 